Hello there, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, if you are into gaming in any way whatsoever, whether that's on a console, on a PC, or a smartphone, you for sure are going to be interested in the Razer Edge. It's the new handheld gaming device from Razer. So, if that sounds interesting, and you want to find out more, please let me explain. Before we dive in any deeper, I would like to thank Qualcomm for sponsoring this video. Okay, so the Razer Edge is a handheld gaming device with the Snapdragon G3X Generation 1 gaming platform. And here you can see it, it's a kind of a standard in quotes, a handheld gaming. You've got a big display, bright display, high resolution, good refresh rate, and then some very good controllers with D-pad and buttons and analog buttons and all that kind of stuff. We'll get into all that uh, in a minute. So there it is, and it runs Android, which means you get access to the full Android uh, ecosystem. And again, we'll talk more about that in a moment. Okay, so we've got lots to cover here. I'm gonna go into the hardware, the performance, the software, the gaming, streaming, the alternatives, why you'd want to pick this device. So stay tuned, lots of things to get into here. So let's start by looking at the hardware, just the pure raw specs here. For the processor, we've got the Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 gaming platform. That's a processor built specifically for gaming. And we'll talk more about that again in a minute. Got 6.8 greater than full HD display. That's 2400 by 1080 it's AMOLED and 144 Hertz. So just designed perfectly for gamers. Got six or eight gigs of LPDDR5 RAM. The 5G version has the eight gigs, 128 gigs of internal storage, and it's got micro SD card slot that takes up to a two terabyte uh, micro SD card. You've got two speakers, digital microphones, spatial audio. There's a front facing camera that is full HD at 60 FPS. Got a big battery, 5,000 milliamp hours, which give you 10 hours plus of uh, streaming. Lots of connectivity, you've got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, there's also a headphone jack which you find actually in the controller, and as I mentioned, there's also a 5G version which has an eSIM. And then of course you've got on the side there, you've got the Kishi V2 Pro uh, controllers, there's two analog sticks, eight buttons, one D-pad, two triggers and two bumpers, and two programmable buttons, an absolute delight for every gamer. So what does that mean in terms of performance? Well, you've got the Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 gaming platform, and that isn't a mobile phone chip. It's not a smartphone chip that they've just stuck in. This is designed specifically for the mobile gaming market. And one of the things is it's designed to be actively called, not passively called, which is what you'd normally get in a, uh, in a smartphone. Of course, that includes the Qualcomm Adreno GPU, which in itself includes the Snapdragon Elite gaming technologies, things like variable rate shading and so on. For the CPU, you've got the Cryo CPU, which is the same generation as the Snapdragon 888 Plus mobile platform. But of course, this is uh, redesigned uh, specifically for mobile gaming. But what you do have in there is octa-core processor, including a three gigahertz ARM Cortex X1 core. And as I said earlier, 5G and Wi-Fi 6E, both connectivity options are very important for those who are doing any kind of remote play or cloud uh, gaming. There's also a haptics engine, so you can get lots of uh, feedback, uh, you know, through the, your hands as you're holding it. You can feel, you know, when you go over a bumpy road or whatever it is in the game that it's doing. So that is really, really good for gamers. Quick look at the benchmarks, this is Geekbench 6, so remember that when it comes to comparing it to other numbers, but it's 1,565 for single score and 3,797 for multi-core, and that's basically the kind of numbers you'd get from a Snapdragon 888 Plus uh, device. But when it comes to the GPU, 5,768 for wildlife, and that's actually higher than you'd get with a Snapdragon 888 Plus. And again, Wildlife Extreme 1,558, again, higher than what you'd get with a, a standard smartphone with a Snapdragon 888 Plus in it. 
But here's the real thing about this. It's all very well having this peak performance, but it's no good having peak performance for the first five minutes, and then you can't play games at a high frame rate because it's overheating. Well, this is larger than a phone, so there are better cooling options. It's got active cooling with fans that result in better sustained performance with many hours of the same level of gameplay. And here's the graph from the wildlife stress test. And as you can see here, look at that. Hardly, I mean, a very, very slight dip after the first or second run because it's basically cold. But then here, look at this. You just keeps going and going and going and going. And it's basically maintaining that same level of performance uh, all the way through. So that is not what you see on a mobile phone or on a smartphone. So that is really quite impressive and important for a gamer. Now, in terms of the software, we're running Android 12 here, and you get everything you'd expect from Android 12, you know, uh, you know, including a clock and a calendar and, you know, <laughs> whatever else you, you like in there. Of course, you've got a Google Play. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But there's also the Razer Nexus app, which is basically a launcher aimed at doing gaming. So it puts games front and center. But more than that, it's also a way of getting the best gaming experience because it gives you curated recommendations, helps you discover, Android games with haptic support, controller support, uh, and that kind of thing. So it's you know everything you might that they recommend that's going to run well on your uh, on your uh, Razer Edge is going to be presented to you, so you can get that best experience. So you can play any Android native game with Google Play Store, and there are also the pre-installed launches I talked about. All your Android games probably better than you've ever played them before, and a game with that sustained performance that you can play and you keep on playing and keep on going. And then, of course, you've also got things like Epic Games. That means you've got Fortnite, for example, something that you don't get on other platforms. Of course, you can get it because it's on Android. But there's more than just native Android gaming. You've also got remote play. So if you have Steam on your PC or you have a console, then you can use the Razer Edge without a third party service to connect the two uh, directly. So you've got Steam Link, you've got Xbox Remote Play, Parsec and Moonlight. So for example, you can start up Steam, you can run the Steam Link app on the Razer Edge, and then you get up to 144 hertz streaming for a PC remotely, the smoothest possible way to play games in your Steam library, but on your Razer Edge. And beyond remote play, you've also got cloud gaming. So this works with a subscription service. You'll need Xbox Game Pass or a subscription to NVIDIA GeForce Now. But basically, if you don't have a gaming PC, then you can just use NVIDIA's one up in the cloud with RTX installed and everything on it like that. And then you can use that, streaming that down to your Razer Edge. Uh, and it's fully optimized for GeForce Now, so you can get that great gaming experience. Now, there are some obvious alternatives to the uh, Razer Edge, the Steam Deck, uh, and the Nintendo Switch. Now, there's a few things to note here that distinguishes the Razer Edge from the alternative. It's got the highest screen resolution amongst that group of three. It's got the highest refresh rate amongst that group of three. It's ultra portable, certainly it's not as bulky or as heavy as a Steam Deck. Of course, there's the 5G version, which means you can be doing your cloud gaming, you know, literally when you're out and about, you know, while you're waiting for the bus or you're on a train or in the back of a car, a long journey or whatever you want to do, you can get that low latency, high speed gaming going on directly to your Steam Deck. As I said, there's Wi-Fi uh, 6E, that's at 6 gigahertz support. And then, of course, you've got all these built-in services like Xbox and Steam Link and GeForce Now, Epic Games and so on, which really does give open up the horizon for you can do so much you're not just limited to one particular ecosystem so what are the benefits of a razor edge over a smartphone because i can hear some of you saying already but i just do all that on my smartphone i can play that game on my smartphone that's absolutely true there's no doubt about that but phones are not custom built for gaming which this is of course with the controllers and everything and there are some pain points when you're doing uh, gaming on your smartphone and that is it drains the battery so you go out you go out with a full battery you're waiting for the bus, you're on the train, whatever it is you're doing, you play half an hour of gaming and now suddenly your battery's going down on your smartphone, which you actually need for phone calls and messages and social media and all that while you're not gaming. Of course, downloading some of these games now, <laughs> I see the downloads going on, one gigabyte, two gigabyte, you know, that's taking up storage on your smartphone, which you may want to use for other things like 
uh, photography, for example, for social media. And of course, when the phone rings, when you get a message when you're in the middle of gaming, that can, of course, be annoying and interrupt you. All of the hardware on the Razer Edge is optimized and designed for mobile gaming. That means longer gaming hours, beautiful graphics, native haptics, and of course, that Snapdragon chipset. So why would you want to pick a Razer Edge rather than the alternatives? Well, the first one, and this is really important for me, you don't need to invest in a new ecosystem. If you're already doing some gaming on Android, then you've already got quite a few games. Maybe you've bought in-app purchases. Maybe you've bought some games outright. You're going to get all those. You don't need to reinvest, rebuy them. But now you're going to see them better than you've ever seen them before on that 144 hertz display, greater than HD display. And then, of course, it comes with sustained performance. All of your Steam games are there. So if you've got Steam games, so again, you're not having to reinvest. You can just use them via Steam Link. And all your cloud games, Xbox and GeForce Now, are all there. So this really does, it doesn't limit you. It opens up the door to so many things. As I mentioned earlier, ultra portable, laying back on the sofa, holding the uh, razor edge above you as you're playing. If you try that on other devices, your arms are going to start to hurt pretty quickly. Not really the case with the razor edge. Uh, and finally, of course, as I said, 5G and Wi-Fi 6E, two connectivity options that really do open again the door. It's about possibilities and expansion. It's not about closing you in to one walled garden. This is about opening the door to everything that is possible. Okay, so there you have it, the Razer Edge. I would love to hear your thoughts about this device in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kinds of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.